Hey, it's David Heatley here from Cycling and Reform, and I was talking to a chap yesterday called Gus, and he asked me quite an interesting question. He said, should I buy a power meter? So what I thought I'd do uh, is I'd put together a few words around uh, uh, some of the reasons why you would want to buy a power meter, and some of the reasons why it may not be necessary for you to buy one. So let's start off. I've got a bit of a list here that I'm going to go through. So firstly, you know, just putting a power meter on your bike's not going to automatically make you an awesome bike rider. It's a tool, just like any other tool. Uh, and if used um, very poorly, then you know you won't get any results out of it. So it's important to understand how to use a power meter to get the results out of it and understand the numbers and those sort of things. So now, if you are a numbers person, then a power meter is fantastic because it does provide a whole lot more insight into your performance, and that's one of the reasons why. Uh, I like using power meters, but you know I still use heart rate myself as well. So, um, but it does give you an indication of uh, your performance against other people. This is the biggest difference between using heart rate and power. So I'll give you an example. If you're an athlete and you're able to sustain 180 beats for five minutes, that really doesn't tell me much around how to compare that to uh, somebody else's performance. But if we put a power meter on, on you, and we ask you to ride a five minute effort and you're able to put out 350 watts for that five minute effort, that gives me a really good indication on your performance and how to, com and, and I can now compare you against other athletes. So power meters do give that uh, ability to be able to compare athlete to al athlete, which is something that heart rate data doesn't. All right, so now the other important thing about power meters and heart rate monitors is that fundamentally the way that we coach and train people uh, doesn't change regardless of whether we're using heart rate or power. So uh, the fundamental process that we go through and the methodology that we use doesn't change. It's just the method that we measure your performance changes. So obviously if we're managing uh, you with heart rate, then we're using heart rate zones and we're using that as a, as a tool to measure your performance. Whereas if we're using power, we're using power zones uh, and we're using power to measure your performance. So the, the training fundamentally is the same, it's just the tool that we're using to measure your performance is different. Now that being said, power data does give me more insight into your performance, so it allows me to drill down into your data and see where you're really good and where there are areas that we could improve on, and especially around training for specific events. So for example, if you're riding a long endurance event that uh, has a lot of hills in it, then the training and the power data we can get, we can use that to modify the training program and tune it a lot better than if we're using heart rate data. And the same for racing, like for criterium racing, obviously the training that we do for criterium racing is different to the training that we do for endurance-based events, but being able to drill down into the data, we can look at your uh, performance and go, okay, well, even though you're on this training program, we can tune it a little bit better just to improve some of the areas that you're really good at and improve some of the areas that you may be a little bit deficient at. So the great thing about power is that it gives you that granularity in your data. But that being said, you know, if you were to follow two training programs, um, if you're following, sorry, one training program that was based on endurance-based events, uh, just by doing that structured training program, regardless of whether you're using a power meter or a heart rate monitor, you still get fantastic results. So uh, a lot of it's got to do with the methodology around the training rather than the device that we're using to measure performance, if that makes sense. All right, so um, now there's obviously some great software out there to measure uh, data on uh, training, uh, you know, on power meters, and one of the uh, products that I use is Training Peaks. I'll just dive into that, uh, just switch to my screen, and um, we'll get into it. So, so here's here's Training Peaks, and this is just uh, an account. Um, and the great thing with performance management charts is that now um, performance management charts can calculate uh, uh, performance management from either heart rate or power. So there's no issues with um, having a power meter to get a performance management chart anymore. Before, we, we could only get performance management charts from power data, but now with the great software that we're using, we can get performance management charts from heart rate as well. And a lot of the athletes that I coach are just straight on heart rate, they don't use power, and we do a lot of performance management uh, in uh, in training peaks uh, just using heart rate so um, so you don't need a power meter to get a performance management chart anymore. Uh, the other good thing uh, about uh, power meters that you don't get with heart rate monitors is a power curve. And remember I mentioned before about five minute efforts and those sort of things. So for in this, in this particular case, you know, this athlete's doing a 252 watt five minute effort and that's their best five minutes and you know the 20 minutes is around 209. So 
not only can I compare athlete to athlete, but I can also see whether we're improving performance over time in certain areas. So we can look at see whether your one minute efforts are coming up or whether your five minutes, you know, 10 minutes. And understand for basically endurance based events, this sort of portion is very important. And when you get down to track riding and sprinting and criterion racing, you know, these numbers become a lot more important. So, so that's what we're looking at as a coach. All right. So, um, and the software is fantastic. You can use it to manage your training load. Uh, and uh, tune to make sure that the athlete's not uh, overtraining or undertraining. So, regardless of whether you're using heart rate or data, you can get that performance management chart sorted out. So, so um, now obviously, like I mentioned, an investment in the power meters uh, is a big investment for a lot of people. Uh, and like I mentioned, also, it's only a tool. So, the ability to be able to use that tool wisely will get you the best results. So, the best way to get uh, the best results out of your power meter is to follow a structured training program. Um, and that's really, really important. So, obviously, we offer a lot of structured training programs, not only in our online training center, um, but also, you know, one on one coaching and our customized training programs. Uh, and we do interface those into Training Peaks for those people that are interested in doing that. So, if you're interested in finding out more, we do have some articles about training with power and I'll put the links below this for you to have a look at. All right, so all the best, take care and we'll catch you soon. Bye.